quick to accomplish that same thing. No, he's saying it's according to his will. And by his work, and by his word. If we can turn to John 20. Verse 30. It says here, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that what? That you may believe, or that we can continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Not life on our own, but life in his name. That we can continue to believe that we can have life and have life more abundantly. Who wants life more abundantly? This is, this is a strong a powerful scripture. Amen. In his name, we can have life and life more abundantly. Can we turn to Galatians? See, we're given life by the Spirit. By digging into this word, we are given life. In Galatians 3, it says, 1, it says, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. So he died on the cross for us. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works or by believing what you heard? So did they receive the Spirit by putting things in their own hands and working for it? Or was it did they receive it by faith? By faith. They knew, they, they knew the answer. Then it goes on to say, Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? God has given you something so great inside of you, but are we working that out good? Are we working that out the way God wants us to work it out? We didn't work for our salvation. God, he died on the cross for us, resurrected on the third day. He came to earth and he, he, he was persecuted. And all of that was given to us. When we received salvation, it was given to us. We, we don't have to go out and work for it. That's not what he's telling us. So you're gonna make sure we're not being perfected by our flesh or by our own our own will, our own desires. God has started something in us. And we need to continue with his plan. We can't we ourselves can't accomplish what God wants to do. Whether if it's in your life or if it's in this community. God has a plan for our church, but we can't accomplish it on our own selves. We have to be led by the Spirit. And in here it says, you know, are you so foolish after beginning by means of the Spirit, now you're trying to do something and take matters into your own hands and get the work done? It's not going to happen. And that's what it states here. 
Are you trying to finish by means of the flesh? Furthermore, in, in Galatians 2, um, it, it, it talks about, you know, setting aside that grace of God that He has given us. Frustrating the grace of God. Getting in the way of God. That's why we need to just trust Him. Amen. God, I know your plans that you have for us. Plans to prosper. Prosper you, prosper your family, prosper your church. Just sometimes you just gotta step back, take your hands out of it, and let God do it. Let Him take control. You see, Jesus came and he destroyed the one that's holding the power of death. The one that's holding the power of poverty. The one that's holding the power of sickness. He came here and destroyed it. Everything and anything that might be holding us back has already been destroyed. It's done. <coughs> we can turn to Hebrews 1. <coughs> Hebrews 1 1. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors, to the prophets. At many times and in various ways. So that saying, you know, he formerly, he would, if you read, I, I can get you the scriptures, I believe it was in Ephesians, or he was speaking to his prophets, he would speak to them through the burning bush. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Through, you know, the quiet voice and through visions. But here it says, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. He has spoken to us through Jesus. Whom he appointed heir of all things. Jesus holds this, this, this title, this title of, of dignity in this world. He was appointed by God and through whom also he made the universe. He was created. The universe was created through the Son Jesus. The Son is the radiance. He's that beaming light of God's glory. There's that word, glory. When you see glory, you see the Son. You see the Son, Jesus Christ, in all of His glory. That beaming light, that radiance, just glowing. The Son in is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, after he came to confront the problem, to confront the, the power of death, sat down at the right hand. of the majesty in heaven. When he sat at the right hand of God, what is that telling us? Everything that Jesus came to do has been done. It was already, it has been completed forever. 
Meaning what? That He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. If you break down this scripture, it's, I mean, Jesus is the exact, exact expression of God. things, the source of our salvation. Can we turn to Philippians 2? This is what has been on my heart, um, what we're going to be reading next. And man, is it powerful. Philippians 2.12 says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. So see here, it's talking about obeying. Continue to work out your salvation. Work it out. With fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose on the outside of you. So what does that mean? To work out your salvation. You see, God has done something so great that we won't understand how great it is until we take the time to work our salvation out of us. Get into the Word, read the Word, and manifest in your life what what God has done on the inside of you. So that saying, you know, work out your deliverance. You have a need. He's telling you, work it out. Get into the word of God. Know how to use the authority that he has given you and I by working it out. It's already done on the inside of you. You just have to work it out of you. Whether you have to confess it, whether you... Just work it out. Speak it into existence. Mm. Just like how the universe was spoken through Jesus. Speak it into existence. You might not see the ending, but God does. Speak it into existence. Mm. Then it goes on to say, Do everything without grumbling or arguing. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and this too is an important part. Why? You got to keep the joy. No matter what it is, you have to keep hold of that joy. You have, no matter what is going on, God's saying, keep your joy. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. So that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God, without fault in a warped and crooked generation. So let's go over that again. He's saying, work out your salvation. Work out what you need in all things. And don't lose your joy. Then... Scripture goes on to say, then 
you will shine among them like stars in the sky. How important is that, that you shine where you go? You are that, that beaming light wherever you go. You're going to be that light, that shining light. And like it says, you will shine among them like stars in the sky. You are going to be that example in your community, in your workplace, in, in your families. You're going to shine. As you hold, it doesn't just end there. It says, as you hold firmly, to the word of life. What is the word of life? The word of God. Amen. Can we turn to Psalms one night? wants to be that light wherever they go. it says the unfolding of your words give light meaning the word of God the unfolding of your word gives light it gives understanding to the simple what this is saying is as soon as you get that word into you you become that light You become that radiance of Jesus. <coughs> Darkness doesn't like that light. The Antichrist spirit doesn't like that light. Like Uncle uh, Stanley was just sharing this morning. Be that light. Don't allow that word to be taken from you. And it explains that in Mark, you know, when they hear the word and immediately Satan tries to come and tries to take that word from you because he doesn't want you to be that light. That's exactly what this world needs is that light of God. Hallelujah. And that's why it says Satan comes immediately and causes them to stumble. And it's not the word that's causing that. It's the Antichrist spirit that's trying to come in and trying to stop you. So it's important to get, we need to just get so deeply rooted and meditated on the word of God so we don't give him that chance to come in and take our life from us. of that. That's like that's just like somebody trying to come into your house and take your TV from you. Are you going to just stand there and watch them or are you going to try and stop them? You're going to try and stop them because you're going to try and stand protective over what is rightfully yours. And that's the same thing as the word. It's rightfully ours. All that God has done 
is rightfully ours. So it says, stand protected. Don't let, don't let any spirit come in and try to take what is yours. We're not here trying to work on our own to get something that we already have. It's already done. We're keeping the prosperity. We're keeping the perfect divine health that he has promised. We're keeping all of his promises that he's promised us. In 2 Corinthians, it talks about us knowing how the enemy will try and work. And I'm not saying this so we can put our focus on the enemy. But we just need to know how he operates so we can stand protected. We got to know how he operates so we can focus on the victory that God has for us. We spend too much time getting caught up in, in the fake news and the, the social media and whatever it is. The more time we spend in there, the more time we get, the more we get caught up in all of that. And God says, stop focusing on that. Be aware of it so you know and focus on Him. Focus on the victory. That's what we're working for. That's the salvation we're working out of us is going to that victory. Focus on God's provisions. And it also says, you know, um, whatever has been taken from you, the enemy has to pay back what? Seven times. Get it back. like a lot but hey that's just like when you tithe and you you know you what is it you get back 30 60 100 fold he's saying in his word you stand firm and you have the faith and you sing that songs of praises give that voice of praise and everything that has been stolen from you has to be repaid seven times. That, that, that's a blessing. Don't you think? It was rightfully yours. Every day for us is a new day to succeed. Every day is a new day for us to go out and speak our salvation into the natural realm. Speak it out. You're walking around right now with prosperity inside of you. You're walking around right now with perfect divine health inside of you. And every day when we wake up, we're given that opportunity to obtain that in the natural.
by working out that salvation, by working out what God has already did on the inside. In John 16, 33, it says, In this world you may have trouble, but what? But take heart. Take heart. Don't, don't be offended. Don't think you have to be down or don't think you have to lose your joy. He says, take heart. I have overcome the world. And that's the same for you and I. Waking up and being overcomers. Because that's who we are meant to be. Overcomers. Romans 1.16 Turn to Romans 1.16. says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. For everyone who believes. As far as I'm concerned, everyone in here are believers. Again, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. How powerful is that? Once you receive the word, you get that power. You have that power. Hmm. Nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing broken. You have that power. We can turn to Hebrews. I'm going to close with this. start at 32. It says, remember those earlier days after you had received the light. There it is again, that light. When you endured a great conflict full of suffering, sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times, you stood side by side with those who are so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property. Because what? Because you knew that yourselves, you yourselves had better, better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence it will be richly rewarded. Mm -hmm. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive yes. what He has promised. Mm -hmm. So see here in the scripture, that, you know, it says they're being mistreated. They're being persecuted and yet Things are being taken from them, but they remain joyful. The scripture says to praise God in everything. It doesn't say praise God for everything. Because sometimes people say, you know, like I said, I'm in persecution and I'm having this. 
I'm in trouble. Praise God for it. No. Praise God in everything. And it says, do not throw away your confidence in him. Keep that confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere. Work it out until you get the result that you want. Don't lose your joy halfway and stop. Because why? That's the moment you become defeated. The moment you give up is the moment you give in to the enemy and say, here you go. The moment you give up is the moment you allow yourselves to be defeated. So persevere. So that when you have done the will of God, you will receive that promise. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you, Father God. Lord, we thank you for your word, the message that you have brought forth today, Father God, for every person here. That we work out our salvation every day we wake up. That we become victorious in all that we do. We speak our victory. We speak everything that God has done for us into existence. No matter what comes about, Father God, that we can push forward. Push forward to the end result. That victory that you said is ours. That prosperity that you say is ours. We thank you, Father God, for the power that we receive from your word to go forth, Lord, and to be that shining light, that radiant light that you have called us to be, Father, so we can share with each and every person, Father God, the glory, and that we continue, Father God, to believe Believe your word, Lord. For you have done it time and time again. Signs, Father. Various miracles. That we continue to believe. And we just give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, this church is so fortunate that we have a good Bible study. It's developing the things that are necessary for us to go higher and higher. You know, uh, the ending, the Bible study lessons, this Tuesday, and they're going into the one that is so key and so important. Uh, it's, it's the E.W. Kenyon uh, advanced Bible study. And this advanced Bible study, I told them that they cannot go over it lightly. They have to understand each chapter. You know, this gives you the uh, principle 
of exactly how Jesus said he's going to build his church. He's going to build his church by the real word, not for flesh and blood, but for my Father which is in heaven. That's the revelation of the word. That's the rhema, the spirit and life of the word that will cause us to change inside, that will manifest outside. So the word salvation that she speaks about so, so uh, gloriously is salvation, not only, first of all, the most important thing is that salvation to get born again. That's the most important thing of all because without that salvation, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot see the word of God. You cannot understand the word of God the way God wants us to understand his word. So once we got born again, then the veil will be taken off like what she was mentioning about, about the enemy. Uh, who, you know, blind the mind of them that believe not. That's the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who shine upon them. So that's the glorious gospel of Christ is the word of God to shine upon them. And, and this is how God is building his church. So I would recommend you to come to the Bible studies Tuesday night, you know, and this, this our Bible study is the key to finally realizing who you really gonna be in Christ Jesus. And I wanna mention another thing about the, between the Christ and the Antichrist spirit which is so key and so important. Yeah, we're going to uh, do it God's way. But God cannot move unless His church moves. He gave us the power and the authority to take reign on this earth. Why? Because what God did was He, the resurrection was so important that he raised Jesus from the dead and made him sit on the right hand of the throne of grace. And he represented the body of Christ, the church, which is you and I. That's the first chapter of Ephesians. The second chapter says that he, when he raised Christ from the dead, he also raised you and I from the dead. We sit him with him on the right hand of the throne of grace. That's where you see it. So, so, so that's why God can rest and He gave the church the power and authority to take reign. What we do, how do we take power and authority? We come against the enemy. We come against principalities, power, spiritual wickedness in high places. Not against flesh and blood. All those people that are, are blinded are, are being operated by the Antichrist spirit. They don't know any better. We, do, we don't fight with them. You see all those people that come in against our president, our nation, against the Christians like that? They don't know any better, but we're here to be the light so that they can see the truth that will set them free. And then we can be totally an uh, 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 example for them that they can be delivered spirit, soul, body, and finances, everything. That's what salvation is. Total for you and I. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why I'm excited. Please come to the Bible studies. They have it. What? Tuesday night. Tuesday at what time? Right here. Bring food. Yeah, they said bring food. Uh, bring food. The, the, the food. Bring bring uh, uh, vegetables. Okay, fruits. Okay. Yeah, because, because the true man is the word of God. Amen. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, I'm telling you, if you want to see your life change, your family change, your community change, your, your workplace change, and everything around you change when you speak the word with power and authority, you need to get to this EW Canon Advanced course. It's the same like all, how all Canon Copeland, Canon Hagen, you know, uh, I keep on mentioning all those people that had to learn, even EW Canon had to learn that too of the revelation of God's word. Amen? Amen. So can we have the prayer?